January the 3rd of uh, 45, uh, we were desperate to take a town called St. Jock. Uh, General Gavin was head of the 82nd Airborne, and he says, you take that town at all costs. So <laughs> we walked, uh, I was lead scout going up to the town, and I went around the bush and only got about halfway around it, started off in the wrong direction. The company commander says, where are you going? I said, well, in this right? And he said, no, give me your, he'd given me a submachine gun to carry at night. And he says, give me the Thompson uh, submachine gun. And I gave it back and got my rifle back. <laughs> and uh, we were not over five minutes from St. Jock, we came up there and the German kept saying, alt, 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 and finally everybody cut loose at where he was and the back of him was a whole platoon of Germans, killed every one of them and they killed him too. They had a picture of that in the Life magazine as a scene from the war. And they, uh, we went on up to the houses and just knew there had to be Germans in those houses. When in the first one, they had these Panzerfausts they had stacked up and you could smell it. Uh, Germans had a, a smell like, uh, uh, well, like uh, mothballs and uh, you could always tell if they'd been there for a while. So the sergeant said, Bettle, you go upstairs and see if there's anybody up there. And I took a flashlight in one hand and a rifle in the other. Wasn't a bit afraid at that moment. Went all through the house, couldn't find anybody. And he said, I'll bet they're in the basement cellar. He read, uh, lifted the cellar lid and there was uh, seven Germans down there. So he just took a grenade and dropped down. And they exploded and they said, comrade, and they all gave up, come up. So we took that town without losing a the man. Then uh, when uh, I got hit the next day, a kid next to me got killed. He had a little tiny piece of shrapnel in his brain and they couldn't save him. And one other guy got killed there. Uh, I was at 88. <laughs> they always said you couldn't hear the one that got you, but I heard him fire it, heard it coming, went over my head and hit the house. And it apparently turned me halfway over and sliced through my neck. You can put your fist in there when, that, uh, when I was hit. They didn't do anything with it, but they put a bandage on it. And when I got back to the hospital, he said, well, it's healing good, just don't fool with it. <laughs> and they never did, it just, and you can't hardly see it.